So people here is Magnus. Are you ready for Vermeymuth? Vermeymuth? Yeah. Vermeymuth. 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 V
Hello and welcome to What's Cooking Loot Looking. My name is Julie Andrews, spelled like Julie Stein, not Julie Andrews. I am a very famous vegan chef, but also a go-go dancer and a marathon runner. I will now teach you something very important. A Greek potato and gar uh, garlic thing. So you start by boiling 500 grams of potatoes. <coughs> Meanwhile, in a teeny tiny frying pan, and I'm talking teeny tiny, this is sort of a, you know, the kind of you fry eggs in if you're all alone and tragic in the world. You put two tablespoons of olive oil. And to this, you add about six garlic cloves, finely chopped. And when I say chop, I ain't gonna chop them up. I'm just gonna press them and you fry the garlic till it's golden brown, not burnt, mind you. I love the smell of hot olive oil and I love the smell of garlic roasted. So this is, you know, Christmas for me. And what we are making here is some kind of sort of a mashed potato, but the interesting part of it is there's no sort of milk or cream or butter. There's olive oil, garlic, and red wine vinegar. Oh, and chives. This is madness. Well, wouldn't you know, the Greek have a word for it. It's called, wait. Skordalia. Yeah, skordalia. And when the garlic is golden, you just put it aside while you wait for that potato to get soft. And when the potatoes are soft, you drain them, but you, you reserve one deciliter of the cooking water. And then you're supposed to rice the to tomatoes, rice the potatoes. If you don't know what ricing is, this is a ricer. Sort of like, well, it, turns, it looks like rice when it's done. So you put the potatoes in and then you press. Oh, you need both hands for this, but oh, you get the idea. Oh, it couldn't be more rice-like, could it? Well, if it was white. To this, you will add the fried or, yeah, I guess fried garlic. To this, you will add one deciliter of olive oil and whisk. You will also add a tablespoon of red wine vinegar, half a teaspoon of salt, 200, gr no, 20. <laughs> 20 grams of chives, not 200 grams. That would be a lot. So I don't think I need to add any of the water, but I will just teeny tiny bit, half a deciliter, just to see what happens. Okay, time for a taste test. Mmm. Okay, this is really good. Mmm. I might never make ordinary mashed potatoes again. Mmm. Or, yeah, I would not make ordinary bed. This is, mmm. This is really good. Damn. The garlic and the chives, well, mostly the garlic, the olive oil, and the red wine vinegar. The red wine vinegar, it's, it adds such freshness. Freshness. Mmm. Yeah. To this, I will just serve two vegan burgers that were on sale. So I'm not going to show you the... Oh, good. This is so good. Okay, this is something you need to do. Mmm. Mmm. So this is my go-to show on YouTube. It's called Map and Lucia. Look it up. It's quite interesting. Anyway, bon appetit, people like Matt. That was so good. That was so good. I could have married that potatoes. Put mashed potatoes. God, and I'm not the marrying kind. Anyway, now I will face Sam Magnus and we will have some celebration of Vermeermuth. Join us. Well, you might join us. You know, you see in the next clip if you're there or not. The people here is Magnus. Are you ready for Vermeermuth? Vermeermuth? Yeah. Vermeermuth. Vermeermuth. How do you... How do you solve the problem? Here's Magnus' first drink of vermeermuth. What's what is what is it? This is a lime basil vermouth cocktail. What's in it? It's a vermouth bianco and 
a lime wedge uh, and basil that that's been what would you call it? Muddled. Muddled. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, a lime on the side as well. So that's it. What? No. And, all... and, um, huh? Is that all the all the liquid is just vermouth? Yeah, uh, six centiliters of vermouth uh, with ice on the rocks. Oh, good for you. I'm yeah. having a dry martini myself. Up yours. Up yours and uh, happy vermouth. Vermouth. Okay, how was it? Oh. You like? Yes. yes. Damn. I mean, Martini Bianco, uh, uh, Vermouth Bianco, is very is very sweet, mm. but because you have muddled uh, a wedge of, of lime, it sort of blended it uh, uh, with the sourness. Yeah. Uh, so it's very nice. Oh, good. And the name of it was, again? I just said lime, basil, vermouth cocktail. Stupid. They should have an interest. If you could give it a name, what would you give it? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, cocktail. <laughs> Oh, that was nice. Oh, what shall I call it? I need to, I need to name it. Mm. Okay, in honor of, I call it. We are, now we are drinking Italian gin and toning. What's in it? Italian. Gin. Gin, Campari, sweet vermouth, tonic water. And they're supposed to have a little orange twist, but I didn't have it, so I put a little Campari, no. I put a little Cointreau in it. Oh. Did you also? No, I put some orange bitters in. Oh. Up yours? Yes. Oh, this is good. Mmm. What? What? Yeah. I, I think... I mean, I, I have I have a fav new favorite of mine, with, uh, 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 like a gin and tonic with rhubarb. Yeah. Tonic, and that one has the same color as this one. Yeah. So I'm my my eyes are ah. that it's supposed to to taste, but it it is very similar. Yeah, it in, is in taste, but this is a little bit more edgy. Yeah. I think it's mm. the Campari. Yeah. Oh, but this is good. It's, it's a very similar to like this, a rhubarb. This is a great summer drink. Mm. If you're wondering what we are doing. Vermouth. We are... You to say, vermouth, say on Posanska. We, we're trying to get how... This is the English pronunciation. Vermouth. Vermouth. This is the Swedish. Vermouth. Vermouth. So how do they say it in the Americas? America. How do they say it? In in America. Yeah. Oh, uh, maybe that's different from English. Okay, so English. How do they say it in English? Vermouth. 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 <laughs> <laughs> how do you say it in Sweden? Vermouth. Ver vermouth. <laughs> No, vermouth and vermouth. No, but yeah, but listen to the Swedish again because it sounds like it's not a hard T in the end. It's like. Vermouth. 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 Yeah. I think you say vermouth. Not vermouth. She doesn't say a hard T in the end. Vermouth. Vermouth. I think what I've learned to say in Swedish is vermut, not vermouth. <laughs> vermouth. Now, 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 when you see it, it sounds, it sounds like uh, it sounds very, like a slicey, sexy thing. <laughs> vermouth, like a mutta. Ja, hon har något läsbande mot slutet. Så säg the Swedish one and then the English one and then the Swedish one and then the English one. Vermouth, verm, vermouth. Vermouth, 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 vermouth. Here we are having a Negroni. Oh, show me your Negroni. So he's got a Negroni in a martini glass. I've got it in a gin and tonic glass. We are muddled. 
So I have eyes in mine. He has no eyes. You're iceless. Iceless. Up yours. Ooh. Oh, this was. Oh, it's a bitter. It's a bitter, bitter thing, but I I like it. Yeah. People, we've been down yeah. memory lane. Now it's time to say good night. How many cocktails? Four, 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 five? Three. Three? Yeah. I'm drunk. <laughs> Talk to you tomorrow. Yes, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching and for liking, commenting, subscribing and following. It really helps and uh, something to do with the internet and the algorithm, I think. So thank you so much.